having a such a large population, um, it is uh, there, there are some advantages and also a lot of disadvantages and some challenges for the governments to deal with. Um, but one item for for supply chain um, that the population affect is is that the population is also potential consumers, emerging manufacturing hubs. Um, Labor-intensive manufacturing uh, for export was a major engine for China's growth. Um, that's how it all started for China. When it opened up, uh, it had this huge population um, that we can build huge factories and build things, um, particularly labor-intensive manufacturing in, in huge volume and export it all over the world. And because it was low cost, um, a lot of the manufacturing from other countries um, were offshore to China, and so it became the world's factory. However, um, the, with economic growth in China, that the labor cost has been going up significantly, and every double digits uh, every, every year. Um, and it's not just the labor cost, it, the land cost, energy costs. Um, it really has been rising very quickly in China. So a lot of companies um, that have labor-intensive manufacturing are starting to move uh, their manufacturing out of China to a lower cost location. All right, we have talked about uh, some of the survey. Then we can also introduce about 10 golden business rules for China. Number one, assemble the right team train locals. People is everything. Especially if you are new in a new country, you don't have uh, your, uh, let's say, the local people where you can really ensure they can understand the culture, the business, and everything. This is the very important to have right team. Know the market and operating environment. Market themselves, at the end of the day, is about the people. It's about so who is your clients. And what is your client's pain points, concerns, preference, all this kind of stuff. China is not one, but eight distinct different markets, as we mentioned already. We are talking about that later. It's looking for multiple points of entry. You don't rely on one point of entry to do everything successful. Observe the market developments and changes, and this is need to be done constantly. You don't thinking I have to do some max survey, research in one day, that's it. No, it is never like that. You need to seek truth from fact. What is the meaning? Not only about record statistics that statesman. I would also think you need to have a lot of interviews, a lot of survey discussions, person to person, one on one discussion with your team, with your customer, your supplier, every stakeholder. China's express industry is moving along in a growth with the environment of development continues to be better and better in China. Yeah, so we are now ranked number one in the express service market size in the world. And then China's express industry completed a business volume of more than 80 billion pieces in 2020. But I think the final uh, number for the whole year maybe exceeds this one. Because we, our customer sent out over 80 billion pieces in December uh, 21st, 2020. Okay, so uh, we could expect much larger volume. And bring uh, its market size to the first place in the world with a growth rate. In recent five years, it's 25%. Yeah, I think this one is amazing. Am I right? So when we're talking about the environment, actually, we has a huge capital investment in express services market. And also our central government has a lot of uh, regulation supports for the express industry. So for the partnership model, actually, Alibaba is acquiring logistic companies. So they have strategic strategic cooperation with Cai Niao. This is case study is looking at in China. 
we are doing um, um, integrated transport uh, uh, with some inbound, with some outbound for the uh, a major uh, OEM uh, suppliers. They're the top, top, uh, the world top, I think they're top three uh, OEM suppliers. Uh, what happens is uh, they have over 30 plants in China. Okay, some are for uh, as a suppliers, some are the the receiving uh, for the product. So they either receive the crown product from another plant, or they have to supply this plants to manu manufacture by themselves uh, more product, finished product, or they have to supply the products to OEMs. So before they are thirty plants are uh, operate independently. Okay, so and uh, every all the transport organized um, by the plants themselves. And there's a le there's none or, or if any transparency regarding where the product is and when it will arrive or when it not 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 arrive. Okay. Also with a high cost. Okay. the measures we, we take. Um, we, we've seen that uh, there was some drops of uh, turnover, as we can see here in the, the, the figure, but the overall income uh, was quite uh, stable with an increase of 2.3% and where the global e-commerce uh, jumped to 36.6%. Uh, at the same time, uh, it uh, resulted the changes in the supply demand balance and left small producers and operators in a difficult situation. I'm going to give a brief introduction of the case that actually happened in Nestle. During the COVID-19, there were several materials were transforming from this place to that place, and uh, there were only seven, seven distributed centers located in China, but over 30 manufacturing factories um, separate all over the China. So that means not only the finished goods are going to be transported from this place to that place, but also the raw material are going to be transited from time to time. So, um, as we can see on the, this graph uh, below, uh, we can see the processes, uh, each uh, step of um, uh, conception of a mask. And uh, the, the multi-sourcing has become an important issue for many companies uh, because with the shortage affecting them, it was necessary not to depend on a single source of supply, but uh, limit the risk of the supply chain disruption. But it, in the other, the situation is crazy. So there is a different speed into countries and uh, uh, for the company, it's very hard to, to estimate the future. And in economical, uh, there is very uh, negative impact because all the, all the companies are very impacted by the COVID-19. Uh, there is a 205 uh, billions of lose in the air transport is in estimations, but there is example now because the, the number is now public.